Kentucky jersey inside, and now he goes to join Anthony. Oh, the IG! Ariola, 32 years of age. Stavern, 34 years of age. Ariola has had weight issues in the past. He weighed in at 248 pounds. Stavern's camp said they like him around 240 pounds. He weighed in at 247 pounds. This is right on the belt line, so everything in here is going to be good. It's going to go up and we're going to go down. All right? I gave you both instructions in the dressing room. I just want to remind you, listen and obey my command at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard. Fight clean. Bye. Tonight is a night about tests. I didn't see you. He has taken the test and failed against Klitschko, but that was in 2009. Stavern has yet to be tested on a setting like this. Whoever passes the test tonight may get another shot at a heavyweight championship. Twelve rounds in the heavyweight division. Don't go to the fridge. This one might end early. Well, this fight's been delayed numerous times because of injuries and illnesses. Stavern's camp says it was Areola just trying to get down and wait. Well, now they get to settle it in a small ring. Andre, we walked this off before the fights began. And inside the ropes, it's only about 18 feet by 18 feet inside the ropes. So for heavyweights, it makes for tight quarters. Yeah, I think it was all by design. These guys, it's no secret, neither one of them are going to do a lot of boxing. They want a knockout here tonight in Ontario. I think they're going to get it. Ariola has been in with Vitaly Klitschko. He lost to him in 2009. Lost to Tomas Adamek in a majority decision in 2010. He's been in against guys like Jamil McFine and Chaz Witherspoon. Stavern's biggest name in his resume is 40-year-old Ray Austin. Stavern looks a little tight right now. Areola's putting steady pressure like he said he was. It's not a good time for Stavern to get caught. He looks a little cold, no sweat on him. Stavern was born in Haiti. The 11th of 14 children. As Ariola tries a body shot, Stavern fights off the ropes. Agent Nod, his family moved to Miami, was involved in some fights in junior high. His mom was concerned about gangs, so they had family in Montreal. Stavern fought out of Montreal, now fighting out of Miami again. Actually, started his athletic career as a football player, was recruited by Nick Saban at Michigan State, but suffered an injury, never got to participate at Michigan State, and was selling cell phones and doing telemarketing, and his weight got out of shape, ballooned up, and went to a boxing gym, and he got a late start. Turned pro in 2005, he's 34 years of age. Ariel, on the other hand, has been boxing since he was a kid. Slides a left hand in, tries that overhand right. Stavern playing defense right now. Good combination to the body by Stavern. Stavern is giving just as much as he's taking right now. This is the kind of fight both men said it would be. Neither fighter was lying. here in the first round for heavyweights Chris Ariola and Vernon Stavern, end of round one. Okay. 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 
Mike backing up. Did you pop the double and triple jab? Huh? Give me another one. Give me another quarter one. Quarter one. Okay, stay on the road. Okay, now the point is one. Come on, guys. What he's trying to do is let you get off and trying to come back and counter after you get off. Okay, bring those hands back. Let you move in behind the jab. Keep pressing. 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 Keep Number two, 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 Number Rain conditions in Buenos Aires in that outdoor venue. That fight has already taken place. But don't worry, after Ariola and Stavern, we will bring you that fight in its entirety. Ariola seems real patient. I'd like to see him pick up his jab a little bit more and work his way in. As Stavern is dangerous, and he's very sneaky with that overhand right. Likes to brawl. Stavern trying to pick his shots out of that corner. Andre, their styles are similar. If you're fighting a guy that stylistically is similar to you, what do you do to try to change the dynamic? I don't think you have to do anything drastic. I think whatever you do, you got to do it better than your opponent. And that's what it boils down to. But right now, Ariola has a slight edge in this fight in the first round and a half. Mr. Vern is not intimidated. He seems to be loosening up and warming up a little bit. Would have liked to see Chris come in. Good right hand from Stavern. A little bit lighter in this fight. Both of his losses came in the 250 range, and he's four pounds off of that in this fight. I think he's in better condition in the, in the mid-230s, and his punches are crisper. Let's see how he turns out tonight. Are you surprised that Stavern came in at 247 when they told us that he likes to be around 240? Well, they did say he put on some extra mass with some weightlifting. Good work from Chris. More concerned with Chris Ariola because they assured us that he would be 235, 236. And some would say, what's the big deal? What's well, a big deal with a fighter like Chris Ariola, who doesn't have a boatload of height? He needs to be in that 230 range to be most effective. I think Chris, when he's a little bit heavier, he tends to wait a little bit more. And again, he doesn't have as much snap on his punches. Final seconds of round number two. Stavern a bit busier in this round. Tyre, stop punching. Stay off the ropes. Make sure you join us May 25th live at 6. 15 p.m. It's Carl Fock versus Miguel Kessler from London, England. You'll see it again at 10 p.m. Followed by live action from Montreal as Michel Boutet squares off against Jean Pascal. All right. Keep that jab in your face. You got to go jab. Got to be active on your way in, okay? Move your head, listen, let him, let him be a little more active. Don't let him get comfortable, okay? Once you get him on the roof, fucking bang him. This Ariel is wife and daughter, Danny and Aaron, looking on anxiously. Hold up, hold up, Chris Ariola. The nightmare against Berman Stavern. Beware, Berman Stavern. Begin round number three. 
In the last round, Ariola landed 12 of his 44 power shots, according to the copy box. Stavern, 4 of 15. Henry Ramirez told Ariola what we spoke about in the last round about coming behind his jab just like that to get inside and hide those big shots from Stavern. Here we see Stavern picking up his jab. Through two rounds, they've kind of felt each other out a little bit. What does, in your opinion, Ariola need to do to sort of get the upper hand here? Well, I'm still trying to figure out what type of game plan Chris has. I mean, we're going into the third round, still relatively early. But he said from the jump he wanted to assert his dominance, and he's not quite doing that right now, though I believe he's slightly up on the scorecard, if it's not even. The Stavern camp feels like they've polished the diamond. And uh, they need to be first. Are they doing enough of that? Well, again, I'm a little unsure about the game plan of Stavarin because I don't know if he's going to box on his back foot the whole night like he's doing or if he's going to try to get some respect for Mariola. But again, it's early and these things have a way of working themselves out as the fight progresses. That left hand was blocked by Stavarin. Stavarin digs a hook into the body. Another right hand to the body. So a nice attack there by Stavern. I think Stavern is the kind of guy who hasn't really fought at this level consistently. He's the guy you don't want to get confident because then he believes that he's supposed to be here. Ariola being the veteran, so to speak, he needs to take control and do it now. with a nice hook to the body again. So Stavern is starting to use body shots here a little bit, Andre. It's like I just said, he's starting to believe that he's supposed to be here. Also that block by Stavern. And in this round, Ariola, according to Coffee Box, has only thrown 19 punches to Stavern. 57, Ariola goes down at the end of the round. The corner thought the round was over. They came in the ring. They ran back out. Cannot be saved by the bell in any round. This Ariola's hurt. He's hurt. Steve Weisfeld. I want you out of the ring. You don't understand boxing, and I want you out of the ring when you take second warning. We got it. We got it. You almost lost And Jack Reese just told the corner of Berman's Stavern Don House that could have disqualified you. Steve Weisfeld, who longtime judge, who's joining the HBO family as a. Analysis. We're going to take a look at the replay first of the knockdown, and then we'll bring in Steve. And let's take a look at the right hand at the end of the round. From Stavern. As we said, he'd been boxing all night. Chris got lazy. As he threw his jab out, Stavern landed with a tremendous right hand, and down went Chris Ariola. Ariola had to make the count to begin for the round to be become official and see blood through the nose. All right, I mentioned Steve Weisfeld, longtime judge, has joined the HBO family as our unofficial ringside scorer. And Steve, first of all, the corner comes into the ring. Could they have disqualified Stavern even though Ariola was down? They could have disqualified him, but California uses the rule of reason. And it was an accident, a no harm foul, and I think they were right not to uh, disqualify Ariola because his corner uh, came in early. That's a slip. Stavern slipped. He was off balance. I'm going to tell you this, fellas. Chris Ariola is still hurt. Steve, he's, better than, he's better than he was at the end of the round, but he's not back yet. All right, Steve, your scorecard, quickly. 28-28.
Ariola won the first two rounds by pushing the action. Stavern won the third round, 10-8 because of the knockdown. All right, and Ariola, bloody mess right now. All right, Andre, you know your guy's still hurt, even though there was a minute in between rounds. What's your, what should be Stavern's plan of attack here? That's a slip. So now both fighters have slipped in the corner, which means the corners are spilling too much water in between the racks. Yeah, I think Stavern needs to start to slowly pick it up. Because Ariola is still hurt. He needs to be patient, but he needs to pick it up because a guy like Ariola, when he recovers, he comes back with a vengeance. And Jack Reese taking control. Now referee making both corners clean up the water. Stavern might have good shot. So Chris Ariola gets dropped for the second time in his career. It was down in 2008 against Travis Walker. Stavern might have broken Ariola's nose with that right hand because his nose has been bleeding profusely since that right hand landed. It's hard to breathe when you got that kind of situation going on. Well, I mentioned that this was the toughest opponent, the most experienced opponent on Stavern's resume. He fought Austin when he was 40. Right now, Stavern making a bloody mess of Chris Ariola. Blood just pouring out of the nose of Ariola. I like the way Stavern is boxing as a big man. I think the difference in this fight came when he started to use his jab. It's not a power jab, but it's blinding Chris before the right hand is nailing him right on the button and Chris can't see it. Well, he's thrown 36 of them in this round. Stavern is in a real good groove right now. Ariola, a bloody mess. Dropped at the end of round three. Stavern relaxed and in control. Listen, listen. Puchalo para atrás. Give me a water, guys. Puchalo para atrás, okay? You gotta work these. You gotta, you gotta push, push, push. Keep pushing, all right? Huh? Usa la jab. I need two or three. It's going to dry. Yes. Yes, sir. I need two or three jabs. Listen, he can't go backwards. He's already tired. Get both on his back. All right, listen. 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 Stavern is real comfortable right now. He landed hooks and right hands right on the button, right on the nose, which I believe may be broken on Chris Ariola. Now the doctor wants to take a look at Chris Ariola. Well, it's not the first time that Ariola's nose has been broken. I'd venture to say, say, say you're right about that. So as we begin round number five, Berman Stavern in the block has grabbed the upper hand to this point in the bout. A thundering right hand at the end of round number three dropped Ariola. One thing Stavern told us is he's known as a power puncher. He wants to try to hide his power. He's worked on that in the gym, and he's doing that right now, and that's what's got him ahead in this fight. Well, they both trade big shots. But it's still early. Stavern has done a good job of using that jab as a range finder. Ariola missed with that cross inside. And then Stavern hooks to the body. Don't discount some of the body work that Stavern has done. Chris Ariola and Berman Stavern in a 12-round Heavyweight showdown from Ontario, California. If you're tuning in, 
to HBO's World Championship Boxing right now. Expecting to see Sergio Martinez and Martin Murray live from Argentina. Tremendous storms in Argentina. That fight has taken place, but we will replay it for you in its entirety after this heavyweight showdown here on HBO's World Championship Boxing. Chris is still pushing forward. His heart is still in it. But if that nose is, in fact, broke, he doesn't want to open up and get hit on that nose. And that's why I think he's so economical with his punches right now. You know, it was interesting when we sat down with Stavern for our fighters meeting. And we chatted with him for a little bit. Overhand right from Stavern. He blocked the LL counterback. After a couple minutes, Stavern looked over at me and he said, well, I want to shut you up <laughs> after some of the things that I had said in his fight against Ray Austin that he won in 2011. But his trainer, Don House, immediately chimed in and said, yes, but justified criticism. They feel like they've gone back to school. They say they've polished the diamond. And to this point, Andre, we're seeing that from Skivarn. He looks much better. Yeah, sometimes as a fighter, you need to hear an announcer be honest and tell you what you're lacking and what you're missing. That's what makes you go back to the gym, makes you go back to school and get better. Chris is busting up a little bit here, but he's never lacking in heart. Chris is going to give it everything he has until it's over. Another busy round. Stavern threw 65 punches, 66 punches in this round. The heavyweight average is 46 for him. There's Berman's brother, John Stavern, who played college football at the University of Miami. That's why he's doing. Hey, he's listen. Down. He can't be shit going back. He's tired, but when you don't do shit, you just sit, give him space. Hey, we're listen. doing fine. Come on, man. He don't have what you got. back off the ropes. He don't have what you got. These guys ready to go. All right, he's ready to go. Get up. Let him last one. Okay. Come on. Let's go. Now, Henry, come on, let's go. Chris, five. Round number six begins for Chris Ariola and Berman Stavern. Stavern in the black dropped Ariola with a right hand near the end of round number three, busted up his nose. The Stavern corner, while referee Jack Reese was giving the count, had stepped into the ring threw in the stool, and then Don House hustled out. Jack Reese used discretion, didn't disqualify Stavern. Good call by referee Jack Reese, who celebrates his 57th birthday today in the ring. But that nose is really giving Ariola some problems. He's starting to puff up around the eyes. And he doesn't seem willing to take a risk against Stavern at the moment. Ariola steps right in there. with a couple of right hands. Going in Stavern. Big shot from Ariola. Stavern seemed to handle it well, though, Andre. And that's what Stavern's going to have to do if he's going to weather these storms. He's got to let Ariola know it's not going to happen right there tonight. Vernon thumps a right hand to the body. Ariola doesn't sort of follow up. That one blocked by the shoulder of Stavern. If the jab has been a difference for Stavern, it's not a heavy jab, but it's enough to keep Ariola honest. He's thrown 208 jabs at Stavern so far in the fight. The jab is a lost arm. Refreshing to see Stavern get back to the basics tonight. 
And you know what? He's done a nice job of throwing hooks to the body during this time in which Ariola hasn't jumped back on. Piling up points and slowly breaking Ariola down. Ariola looking for the home run. Stavern sidestepped it. Mr. Burns' team worked on this, but they're boxing tonight. He's relaxed, and they look like they had a game plan coming in. Which, this is going to be an interesting round to score because, yes, Stavern caught a couple of power shots, but in the interim, he's been tagging Ariola to the body and landing some shots of his own. Good right hand by Stavern. To end the sixth. Well, immediately following live boxing, stay tuned for Real Sports featuring a story on a fighter who donates 100% of his in ring earnings to spinal cord research. Hey. Nothing else. Nothing else. Let's go. Come on. Hey, listen, listen. Deep breath. Quit, quit waiting on that counter hook. It's not there. He's rolling out. Don't let him get off. Good boxing from Stavern, but Ariola is always dangerous. As he's pressing in. Big right hand from Ariola. You see the eyes of Stavern roll behind the back of his head, and Ariola puts on the pressure in the last round. Well, we begin round number seven of the scheduled 12 rounder, and we welcome back in Steve Weisfeld for his score. Steve? Bob, I have a 57 to 56 for Stavern. Good work by Stavern in rounds four and five to the body and the head. In round six, Ariola landed the harder shots. Stavern was hurt, so I have Stavern up by one point. Steve, would you could you make the case that maybe the judges would give Stavern that last round just for the overall body of work? You could make that case, but when in doubt, I go with the harder punches, and as I said, I think Stavern was hurt, so I scored that round for Ariola. All right, intriguing fight set up. Good jab there by Ariola. One thing we got to keep in mind is though Stavern is looking good, he's boxing. It's still only the seventh round, and he's in with championship round. The championship round start, and he's never been past ten rounds before. See if Stavern can maintain. Let's see if Ariola could find the range and land his big shots. He's used a couple good jabs here in this round. Pushes out the jab right there. Stavern steps in with a right hand. Ariola takes a deep breath. Left hook to the body by Stavern. Thumps a right and a left to the body. Well, when a guy has got probably a broken nose and there's blood coming out, you start tattooing the body, Andre. That has double the benefit, doesn't it? That may be a game changer. Stavern has already been successful up top. If he goes to the body and then brings it back up top, it might not be good for Ariola. They exchange big shots. Really, a lot of punches from Stavern. We call what he's doing in the boxing community rain drop. He's dropping rain on Ariola. He's pot shotting him. Ones and twos, good body shot right there. But Ariola's not answering Stavern's attack. Yeah, I mean, according to the copy box numbers, Stavern has thrown 56 punches in this round. Ariola is 18. Steps in with the right hand. To the face of Ariola. I wonder if some of those body shots have Ariola a little cautious. I think it does. Nothing really from Ariola in the seventh round, just sort of gave it away to Stavern. Oh, 
break this guy down. You know, you go. Huh? Huh? He does. His daughter sitting at ringside. You can see the anxiousness on her face as her dad's face busted up. Hey, we got a big deal, baby. Hey, hey, listen, listen to me. This ain't gonna be easy. You gotta dig deep, son. All right? Listen, you gotta dig deep. I know you're hurt. But you gotta dig deep. You gotta let those hands Two on his belly, okay? And it. then come upstairs. Okay, then come upstairs. Come upstairs. Guy. Then come upstairs. All right? Keep you coming forward. You're doing good. How is he seconds out? Tres y cuatro, okay? Tres y cuatro. Christopher. Five more, baby. So we begin round number eight in the last round, according to CompuBox, Ariola threw just two power shots, landed one. He was nine of 19. Stavern, 14 of 66 overall, 10 of 25 in the power department. And a round that Ariola just didn't do anything in. I don't not know how bad Ariola's hurt because obviously I'm not in there, but I think if he wants to win the fight or put himself in a position to land a shot, he's going to have to take some, some chances. So Vern is keeping his, his left hand real low. But he hasn't had a reason to bring it back up tonight. Combination and the right hand hits Ariola right in the nose, and then the blood starts flowing again. Ariola might have hurt his shoulder or his hand just a few minutes ago. Yeah, when Ariola's backing up like he is, that's not <laughs> where his strength is. Not at Fighting off the back foot. Oh, good right hand to the body by Stavern. Ariola takes a huge deep breath. I think Stavern is creeping in, looking for another big shot. Good work to the body. Yeah, those right hooks to the body definitely have helped. Again, he touches Ariola to the body. He with a big right hand puncher like Stavern, he'll go to the body, blow you to sleep, and then come upstairs like he did when he knocked Ariola down earlier in the fight. Ariola just averaging 27 punches thrown per round to this point. That's 19 below the heavyweight average of 46 per round. And he's really letting Stavern sort of win some of these rounds without having to put maximum effort into it. Yeah, no, that's true. And I think Stavern is looking to set up another big shot. Boxing is not just, he tried right there and he landed the hook. Ariola trying to find that big shot to change this fight. Blood is flying everywhere. Been bleeding since the end of round three when Stavern dropped him with a right hand. And another body shot by Stavern. End of the eighth. Well, after this fight, stay with us because we'll replay from Argentina. Sergio Martinez squaring off against Martin Murray. Put your head up. Come body shot. Got to stop. Start working that body. All right. Keep so down. Keep no, down, baby. Come on, Charlie. Keep down. Keep down and start breaking the body down. All right. We beat his head up to death. He ain't going nowhere. You got to stop breaking down to the body. You got to take nine. Number nine. Number nine. You got to let those hands go. How's he doing? How you doing, Chris? Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Andre, some of the action from round eight, and a good right hand by Stavern. Stavern has been on the money with that hook right hand all night long, and it looks like something happened to Ariola right there. It's not clear what exactly happened. Well, he told his corner in between rounds he was fine. Um, I guess 
Well, we're talking about Chris Ariel here, so that's what he's going to say. I guess my question is, they keep saying, you know, you're looking good. We know you're hurt. you got to fight through this. But let's get a little deeper into this right now. What does Ariola have to do strategically to try to turn this fight around? We know he's got a barrel full of guts. We know he's got heart. But you need more than that. What does he have to do technically to try to turn this around? Well, like we said earlier, number one, he's got to tighten up his defense to protect the nose. And he's got to get go behind the jab and make Stavern work. Stavern, for whatever reason, is sort of lackadaisical on the ropes, and that's where Chris wants him, where he can put himself in a position not to win by points, but to land a big shot. Do you think coming in at 248, and you mentioned it earlier, that in your opinion, Ariola's best when he's, you know, around 240, between 235, 240? Does that weigh into this, no pun intended? Well, I don't want to put too much on the weight. I, I, I was disappointed. I thought he should have been about 8 to 10 pounds lighter, especially with what's on the line here. Um, I don't want to take away from the, the masterful performance that Stavart is putting on right now because the young man is boxing. Stavart, a late start as a pro, turned pro in 2005. This is the 76th round of his career. Ariola trying to jump in. But really, not a lot of this is landing. The hometown fans think it is, but most of it's not. But he's putting himself in a position to land something big. And that's what he needs to do. Got to turn it into a firefight and hope that one big shot gets through. And the same for Stavern. Stavern countered nicely with a left hand off that exchange. Stop. How many fights? Well, the Stavern camp made note of some improved strength and condition. There's a right hand from Ariola. Stavern's looking for his own big shot in there. Well, he showed me a lot of poise, though. He anticipated the uppercut and moved away from it nicely. His eyes are wide open and he's watching. Don't, don't let the crowd deceive you. Stavern is not hurt. He's looking for his own big shot right now. A better round for Ariola. This is what Chris wants to be. He's got to work right here. Stavern negates it by grabbing. Smart move. Right hand by Ariola. Not found the mark. End of round nine. Hey, you gotta put three or four together. Put your head up, son. Hey, here we, here we go, here we go. If you're gonna hit him, hit him high on the head here. Don't hit him on the jaw. You got, you got granite chin. Hit the fucker here on the top of the head. Right, okay? Up. Don't keep it on the jaw. Yes. You're gonna box this guy. All right. You heard You have some. Chris, you good, buddy? You have some. You hear me? You have some. Chale Gana. What's wrong with you, baby? Open here now, you couldn't do nothing out of here. All right. And again. All right, let's go to work. You doing all right? Again. All right. Ain't nobody you see Ariola stepping on the gas, getting Stavern on the ropes and landing that nice choppy right that he's known for, actually landing it twice. But you got to take your hat off to Stavern because every time Ariola lands a right, he answers right back. And Stavern is seen poised in the pocket, but a good round nine for Chris Ariola. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Steve Weisfeld. I have an 86 to 84 for Stavern. Rounds seven and eight were easy to score. Stavern landed more punches and the harder punches. In round nine, Ariola landed big right hands. So after nine rounds, I have Stavern up by two points. All right. And obviously the knockdown at the end of round number three, a big factor in the judges' scorecards as well in which Ariola went down from a right hand. Good right hand to the body by Stavon. Both fighters are taking a little breather right now as we are early into the 10th round.
Devern has fought. Very good fight, a smart fight. He's been much busier than Ariola. Scored the knockdown. Ariola hanging in there. Pretty close on the scorecards, we would assume. I think you got to give Stavern a little bit more credit than just fighting a smart fight. He's shown a lot of grit. There were some questions about his chin because early in his career, he had a, a stoppage that was disputable. He took some big shots and he's answered like he's supposed to. Well, this is one of those rounds that Ariel has really taken off according to the CompuBox numbers. He's only thrown 10 punches to Stavern's 45. Two minutes gone by in the 10th. There's another right hand to the body. That score, Ariola tries to unload with a power shot. Stavern dances out of danger. Stavern said he had three training camps getting ready for this fight with all the postponements. Good body shot from Stavern. There was some concern he may be overtrained, may be burnt out, but I think he peaked at the right time for this fight. Well, his camp felt like they had polished the diamond a little bit. Definitely a more polished performance. Can he finish another right hand to the body by Stavern? Scored, end of round 10. Well, earlier tonight on the undercard, had a four-round super welterweight bout between Jose Martel and Oscar Molina. Oscar Molina represented Mexico in the 2012 Olympics. He was fun to watch in London. He scored a left-hand knockdown that rattled Martel. And then again, another left hand and 55 seconds into the first round. Oscar Molina picked up his fifth win and his fourth stoppage. Hey, Boris, tackle the werewolf, okay? Hey, hey, how are Hey, one, two, and then come upstairs. You got to do one, two, and come upstairs. One, two, and come upstairs. Right here, right here. Change it up. Chris. We begin round number 11. Scheduled for 12. Chris Ariola, Berman Stavern. Possible heavyweight championship shot at stake for the winner. Ariola got dropped at the end of round three. Blood has been pouring out of his nose since then. And one of the things, Andre, that Stavern used in the last round, Ariola was inactive. He only threw 27 punches to Stavern 70, was he was touching Ariola to the body. That's the game changer. If he can stay there, if he can stay there long enough to get Chris to bring his hands down ever so slightly to go back upstairs with a big shot because Stavern looks like he's carried his, his power into the later round. Stavern is in a unique position in this fight right now where he can coach to a victory if all goes well, stays well, or he can try to make a statement here on HBO boxing tonight and show the fans that he's not only worthy of the number one spot, but to be the first Haitian heavyweight champion. Well, he tried that right cross that missed just a couple of seconds ago. Dips away from an areola right hand. Left hand by Stavern score. Good right hand to the body again by Stavern. He's used hooks. And straight right hands to the body. Good time for Chris to step on the gas. I don't know how he feels. Mr. Vaughn looks like he's a little bit tired. He's got his mouth open.
Chris does too, but I think it's more so the nose than anything else. Devern, good ring generalship there, dips away from the left and then the right. Well, that one was low, and Stavern knew it as soon as he threw it. Good sportsmanship there. These two had a contentious press conference this week. In which Stavern said he was going to chop off Ariola's head. He's bloodied his nose, that's for sure. Which is really out of character for Bernard Stavern. He's pretty laid back. End of round 11. Hey, listen, son. You got nothing to lose, so you're behind. You got to let it all hang out, all right? Three minutes. Keep breath. Three minutes. Let's just yeah, take this walk down. Finish. Finish strong. All right? Hey. The last three minutes. Let's if go do this. If you see something, go for it. Let it go. Let, let it go. Let everything go. Jab, yeah, baby. Last hey, round. You throw a jab, he knows you're coming with the right hand. So put that jab right, put the right hand right in his chest, or bring it up on the, underneath of the body, and come on the other side, all right? Listen. You gotta move. He's more than one jab on the way in, right? He's tired too. First, he's fat. He's gonna try. Finish. Last three minutes. Come on, fill it up there. Go Last second breath. Finish job. Twelfth and final round, Chris Ariola and Berman Stavern. Don't forget, after this heavyweight showdown, we will bring you the replay of Sergio Martinez, Martin Murray, which has taken place earlier from Argentina. Ariola's corner says, you need a knockout. He got dropped at the end of round number three. Stavern, for the most part, has controlled the action. How does Ariola? Turn the tables, Andre. Barriola's going to have to step on the gas right now. But it's a dangerous territory, Barriola, because Tavern is still powerful. And Chris is taking more chances, just like this. Tavern is shooting for a home run right now. Both fighters are. Bombs away to start the 12th. If you're Stavern and you pretty much think that you got the fight in control as far as the cards are concerned, but you are fighting in Ariola's home area. What does he need to do here in the balance of the 12th round? Stavern doesn't know if he's up or not. We're in California. I think the California Commission is a great commission, but you just don't know. you got to close the show in this type of situation, just like Stavern is doing. He's got Ariola on his heels. Go for the knockout. Stavern just threw a beautiful left hook to the body. Mixes in an uppercut, chopping left from Ariola. Face of Ariola, bloody mess. It's been that way since round three. Stavern is looking like a fighter who wants to be the heavyweight champion. And a win here could put him in line. Another hook to the body from Stavern. The body shot. Wow. Stavern is really stuck with those body shots. I like Ariola taking this kind of punishment, but you got to respect this man. He could have packed it in, but he didn't. He's still fighting. Does Ariola have a punch in him? He's got 30 seconds to find it. Wow, Ariola is a mess. Those body shots just taking his will away. Another left took to the body by Stavern. He hurt him with that one. It was a test for Stavern and a test for Ariola. And it looks
looks like Stavern has aced it. Chris Ariola got dropped at the end of round three. He fought through the blood, the cut left eye, and at the end of round number three, this fight really turned around. That shot dropped Ariola. And the blood started pouring out of the nose, and then in round number four, Berman Stavern kept up that pace. Using his jab, shots to the body, and the right hand, snapping back the head of Ariola. In round number six, Ariola had a moment of his own. Although Stavern had done good work to this point, Ariola snaps back the head of Stavern with a left and a couple of right hands. But then in the later rounds, Stavern again got it working. He used the shots to the body, and then that left and right, right on the chin of Ariola seemed to hurt his left arm. And in the 12th round, Ariola came out fast in the 12th round, but Stavern used thunderous shots to the body. He answered with solid scoring shots of his own. And the face of Chris Ariola sort of tells the story. Battered, bruised, bloody, and look at Berman Stavern. Clean as a whistle. That young man boxed tonight. You gotta take your hat off to him. Well, Steve Weisfeld has it for Berman Stavern. Steve, who are the judges that will make this official? First judge is uh, Carla Caiz. Carla comes from a boxing family. She has two brothers who are boxing officials. Her dad has been a referee and a judge for years. This is one of her bigger bouts. I understand she's a consistent judge. She works a lot in California, and the commission has confidence in her. Martin Denkins, he refereed a world title fight in 1967. He's had a ton of experience. I've worked with him. I agreed with him on Bradley Provodnikov, and he certainly knows what he's watching. Claude Paquette, a retired police officer um, with a major crimes unit in Montreal. I understand he's a fine judge, as you can see. He had the first fight even with Pascal and Hopkins. I thought Hopkins won that fight. All right, now let's see how the judges had it scored as we send it up to our ring announcer, Barry Eagle. Ontario, you have just seen one of the great heavyweight bouts you will ever see. How about a big round of applause for these two amazing warriors? We go to the scorecard. Judge Carla Caiz and Claude Paquette score the bout 117-110. Judge Marty Denkin scores the bout 118 to 109 for the winner. By unanimous decision, out of Miami, Florida, Berman, beware Stubborn! Victorious. As we take a look at the final punch stats from CompuBox, and you see that Stavern, well, he landed 15 more punches, but look at how many more he threw in the course of this fight. 710 to 333. His percentage was low, but he was busier during the course of this fight. And you take a look at the power numbers. Stavern landed at 38%. The same for Ariola, but once again, it was Stavern who was busier here in the fight tonight. Well, Berman Stavern is uh, getting ready to join us here at ringside, and Berman is with us. And Berman, congratulations on the performance here this evening. Thank you. <laughs> you uh, talk about the right hand in round number three that dropped Chris Ariel at the end of the round that sort of changed the way this fight was going. Well, you know, Chris. Well, we've got a dispute going on in the ring right now. Oh, and now promoter Don King uh, nearly fell down as he was trying to get down the ring steps here. And there's Don. So, well, we got Don, you all right? I am not. All right. Well, good to see you're all right. All right. Berman, talk about the knockdown at the end of round number three that really grabbed the attention of Chris Ariola. Well, 
the first the first round I was throwing a lot of jab right so I realized every time I throw the jab excuse me when he threw the jab he let his right his left hand down so I was like you know what let me just throw a jab and as soon as I see that he throw that, that his jab put the right hand on top but then I tried it throughout the fight and he knew what was coming so he blocked he blocked most of them Berman, one of the other things that you did very well during the course of this fight is you hit him in the body often with those right hooks and left hooks. It really di disabled him during the course of the fight. Did you feel that it was affecting him as much as it looked? Of course, no disrespect. You know, Ariola, if you look at his body, he got a little bit of a little bit of meat down there. So we, we've been working on that. Plus, I got to say this: for the, for the last nine months, I've been working in the gym, and I've been thinking about you. But <laughs> my last fight, I'd uh. With Austin, we was talking about how I was not doing a certain thing. So throughout the whole fight, every round, I was talking. I was thinking about you. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you mentioned that in our fighter meetings, and your camp said that the diamond was polished. Do you yeah. believe that this was your best performance today? Of course, because I could have just stayed with him and bang, but that's his game. You know what I'm saying? That's my game too. But I also wanted to show everybody that I could be behind my jab. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I did. I, I hit him to the arm, shoulder, everywhere with the jab. So that kept them away from me. And then as soon as he wanted to back me up to the ropes, I always found my way out of the rope to the middle of the ring. So what's next, Berman? <laughs> Can I get this? Klitschko, that's hey, we're going. I got a special message for Klitschko. Do not retire. Please fight me. A real heavyweight. Not no chump. That's it. The call out for Vitaly Klitschko. I got to say uh, one time for my people, one time for my uh, my people in Canada, Montreal, Laval. I got to say what's up to my Miami. I got to say what's up to West Palm Beach. I got to say what's up to Vegas, Henderson. You know what I'm saying? People that, 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 that supported me. Uh, the message throughout Twitter, I see them. I don't really respond to all of them, but thank you. I love you. I love Haiti. Throughout the fight, this for my country. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking about my people. What's worse than being a heady? So in the ring with Ariola, and worse than that. So that gave me a lot of motivation and, 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 and be strong mentally. All right. Well, Berman, congratulations on a great performance. Great performance. Great That's Berman Stiver. Now we're joined by Chris Ariola. Chris. Talk about the shot that he caught you. You the first two rounds went looked like according to plan. Good fight, Art. Talk Good about fight. talk about the shot that caught you at the end of round number three that sort of changed the course of this fight. Yeah, man, with that right, with that uh, hook, he uh, broke my nose literally, man, and uh, I couldn't breathe no more after that round. I I couldn't breathe. I couldn't uh, catch my breath. And you know, like Mike Tyson said, everyone comes into a, a fight into a plan until they got hit. That's exactly what happened to me, man. Uh, I got hit straight in the nose. I couldn't breathe after that. No excuses. I came into this fight ready. Sixth round, my uh, left arm died all of a sudden. And regardless, man, he's a tough fucking kid, man. Chris, we're going to take a look here at the knockdown. And right there, he caught you at the end of the third. Yeah, as, uh, you could see there was a right hand that came in there. And uh, it uh, caught me. Man, it was, just, it, it was just a right hand that just caught me around the button. Like I said, tough kid, man. And can't take nothing from him. Um, I came into this fight prepared, ready to give his fans a fight. Um, once the nose was broken, our game plan was out the door. Were you surprised that he was able to stay as consistent as he was throughout the course of the fight? He worked you to the body a little bit, and he maintained that good use of the jab to kind of keep you off balance. Yeah, you know what? He did, and honestly, I had a better jab than he does. Way better jab. I kept catching him with the jab more than he did. But um, he kept me off balance. He threw a jab and moved around. And something that I wasn't expecting from him is uh, for him to move as much as he did. Um, I was expecting for him to uh, uh, come in there and fight and, and be, uh, try to uh, have a slugfest, but um, his game plan prevailed tonight. Uh, what's next for Chris Ariola? You mentioned that this was a very important fight based on your age and what you've been through. Where do you go from here? Fight again, man. Man, the, the, the thing is, uh, it's still to get the championship, man. Ain't no stopping me. Ain't no stopping me at all, man. My, my, my head goes up to him. He beat me tonight. One day I may see him again, and uh, it'll be a different story, man. Um, so I want to congratulate him. His game plan prevailed, but I'll be back. I promise. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, man. Chris Ariola joining us here at ringside as Berman Stavern wins a unanimous decision, including dropping Ariola in round number three. It broke Ariola's nose, and it changed the course of the fight. Thrilling action here in Ontario, California.
The time is now. We need to shut it down. Gorilla music. We move in units underground. Feel the movement.